now you have your own lighting company and you're one of the best out there, if not the best out there. And I do want to dive into spectrum tuning here to begin because I feel like this is something where people think that we the LEDs kind of start out with spectrum tuning with the, the blurple lights, right? And then they went away to full spectrum because they is you know the the blurple lights that spectrum tuning wasn't really optimal. But now we're going right back to doing spectrum tuning, um, and y- your lights have that ability. Can you talk to us a little bit about like uh, your lights, how they have that ability, what kind of the optimal spectrum is for veg, flower, so on and so forth? Sure. So we have two different options too. So like originally we started with a four channel spectrum tuning light, and I actually can remember uh, one night, the middle of the night, I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning and I jumped out of my bed. And I thought of the idea to make what's our Voyager and our, um, which is a two channel spectrum tuning light, which no one has ever done. And uh, I, I remember thinking, oh, oh man, how has this not been done yet? And it's basically like taking two lights in one and one that's like extremely warm. So like um, the warmer you go is like a HBS and the cooler you go is almost, I, I always refer as like a metal halide, but it's actually much bluer than that. So I kind of came up with an idea um, of doing that. And then um, like normally you have deep red and far red controlled independently, but I had the idea of putting it on a, the warm white channel and fixing it. So it's at a safe level. So it doesn't matter what you could do. You could never hurt yourself with other four channel spectrum tuning lights. There's definitely things you could do to hurt yourself by using too much far red or too much deep red. So it's almost like spectrum tuning simplified. And what I have discovered is to say that there's just to, to even think that there's one awesome spectrum that's the best, it's wrong because there's different cultivars react differently from different spectrums, different, um, different food, just everything. So it's about really having that perfect balance and kind of taking control. I really truly believe if you're trying to find the true genetic potential, you're not doing it with one spectrum because um, you have to test it under multiple, like that one spectrum could be the best one for it, but you don't know unless you test it against something totally different. Um, And so I think that vegging uh, in blue is clearly ideal if you want to have the the best type of stack, the shortest internode spacing and limiting your stretch as much as possible. So we originally um, started with um, making our spectrum tuning lights. Well, it would have a warm white channel that's 2200 Kelvin and a cool white channel that's 9,000 Kelvin. And a 9,000 Kelvin has about, um, I'm just trying to think, it has about 36 36 to 37% blue. And the sun has anywhere from 25 to 30%, depending on where you are. So obviously the more blue, or having more blue than anyone's ever really used before than in metal halite, we're seeing just results that you've never really seen with tighter internode spacing. Um, we have a company called Verde West, or there's a company called Verde West on Vancouver Island that they documented going from two and a half inches to one inch, just doing like side by side. So like it's, you know, um, I just really think that that is what you should be doing in veg. Now, another thing is, especially for people that are tent growers, why I think spectrum tuning is so huge. A lot of times you're limited in height and you see like, you know, I've even seen like, I guess six foot tents are pretty common, but I think they can even be shorter than that. And it's just, it really limits how much room you have to grow. So I think being able to have control and use a like a blue or dominant spectrum while that stretch is happening, it, it just, it's a game changer. It's just giving you that ability. Like I'm sure you guys know how many times has it happened where your plants, you waited too long to flip and now your plants, you're fighting it time. over and it's just a disaster. So yeah, we're seeing that a warmer spectrum Um, is really important for plants bulking up. So the ability to use a really warm spectrum, it's a game changer when it comes for yield. And we also noticed that like the the plants just get like this, they seem greasy from it. You know, like uh, when I was testing a couple of different spectrums and on one of the runs, we're just seeing that, hey, they really like they're giving it this, well, some plants are responding with like this just being like greasy and stickier at an earlier time with it. So having that ability to go warm and then um, as the, the last few weeks are left, add blue back in. I, I just think it's a game changer for the last decade of me having like larger HPS rooms. I would build them so I could hang lights in the middle. And for the last three weeks, we would add metal hell lights. And those rooms undisputably had the best color, adding those that blue back in. Um, so, And that was from a side not perfectly uniform. When you have it in a light... 
that it's like it's like it's checkered within it so you can make that blue completely uniform and hit everywhere um so that's why i think it's just uh i think it's a game changer and i think it's the future and like when they first came out it was like really expensive but like spectrum tuning is now affordable you can get a spectrum tuning light cheaper than a single channel light in a lot of different cases so damn see that's where like when i first started i i started with the hps and worked my way down to the cmh ceramic metal highlight and then eventually my larger room back when it was still trapper time was hps cmh hps cmh it was checkered through the room and it was very expensive to set that all up you know to have all these different ballasts and all it was just the day of saying the word ballast even it's crazy to me now we're saying drivers but it's it's to the point now where this is all built into one unit and the affordability of this can be in your single tent is there a difference have you noticed with the the rosin extraction because that seems to be where the people are going now more than ever as we're evolving they're growing trichomes and and resin more than they're growing the biomass so to speak i'm still a i was as you see a biomass guy but that's where the the light tuning the spectrum tuning are you noticing people being able to get better yields in terms of the extracts too not just the flower yeah absolutely like higher resin now i've been you know, I've been kind of bugging this one company because they've been doing a whole bunch of side by sides and they have all this lab work. They've just been completely slammed, but I'm hoping to soon get because um, they've got just such awesome data where they've got like 20 crops with certain cultivars and then they've switched over to spectrum tuning lights and they've seen anywhere from like a 20, like 20 percent plus gain. I'm um, nothing lower than that in T or in TH and terpenes, you know. Oh, did see that's and this is where the argument of if it ain't broke don't fix it well now we're evolving and we're taking it to the next level this is the same argument that people who are still saying hid is the only way to get the full expression of your plant and maybe they're not wrong because their cultivars in particular like the red a little more they like the way that that's growing so now i've been growing this headbanger from karma genetics forever it's like i'm tied to that one and now it's making me think like well maybe if the spectrum tuning that stretch wouldn't be as dramatic and I'd have the tighter node space and I'd be able to get that yield that I've been looking for for, yield, for years while maintaining the quality. You know, and I think that's the crop steering method of lights now versus just your feeding is becoming such a crazy thing for not just the commercial growers, but the home growers. A absolutely. Like I know a lot of people are stuck on HPS and they say you can't get as, as good of quality. And anyone that said that has never done an LED with the true HPS spectrum. People get confused. A lot of people advertised this is a full hbs replacement but it replaces the same amount of light that a hbs has but it's actually not the same temperature of light so you know the standard leds these days have about 20 percent blue and some even higher up to 24 25 percent well hbs have four percent so it's just impossible to get those same results um like i and i you know i would challenge anybody that thinks that hbs is better will do use a, a led that's got a real hbs spectrum and then and then match the surface leaf temperature that's another really important thing where people fail from when they're going um from hps to led a lot of times they just switch out their lights and now they have an oversized air conditioner and it's making it think it, like when you have an ac turn on and off really fast um it, it just is going to have your temperature like on a chart going like crazy so you're not going to have a stable surface leaf temperature and i think it's really important um i know some of the first experiments that I did, including in the trailer that I'm at, I, I got a one and a half ton AC and I added two lights that were 660 watts. And I just didn't matter what I could did. I either got it too hot or too cold. I couldn't, I couldn't optimize it. And it was like a real struggle. It's, it's kind of a, a eye opener. It was an eye opener to me about how important it is. Um, Cause like when you can hold that, when, when, if you can hold that temperature within a few degrees, if something is sized properly, it is, you're only going to have like a three degree um, swing. And that just allows you to do so much more um, like in vegetation. Like I hate to go by ambient temperature always, because if you go by ambient temperature, it could be so different at, at one person's house to the other, depending on where they, their airflow, how, and the height of where it is, but surface leaf um, temperature, I think should be the standard. So just, uh, I've, you know, I repeat this all the time, but it's like, as soon as your AC kicks on, run in there and take the surface leaf temperature. Or even if it's a tent, as soon as your air kicks on to circulate everything, you know that that's the hottest point. Get those that those numbers. And then as soon as it turns off, you've got the coolest point. Take that from a successful room and then implement it into a new room if what you're doing. And, and you're going to get the same results. And I, I think that's extremely important. This FTS clip was brought to you by AC Infinity, leaders in garden innovation. 
Use discount code the stash fifteen at checkout to save some money on your order. From the Stash Podcast.